you're so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. There is trouble brewing in Current Affairs, one of the U.S.'s only socialist magazines, with a, a scandal that emerged today when one of its staff members posted the following. Dear comrades, we, the former full and far-time staff, write to you with deep sadness and disappointment about recent events that have occurred at Current Affairs. On August 8th, Editor-in-Chief Nathan J. Robinson, author of Why You Should Be a Socialist, unilaterally fired most of the workforce to avoid an organizational restructuring that would limit his personal power. Yes, we were fired by the Editor-in-Chief of a Socialist magazine for trying to start a worker co-op. Ooh, this is not good. Um, I'll skip this bit, but... But when we finally got around to discussing organizational models during a Zoom meeting on August 7th, Nathan became agitated. He insisted that in our attempts to set shared internal values, we were disregarding his vision for current affairs as published in the first issue. There was a palpable shift in his demeanor, and he behaved in a hostile manner throughout the rest of the conversation. The next morning, he started removing people from the company Slack and sent letters requesting resignations, eliminating positions, and in some cases, offering new honorary titles which would have no say in governance. In individual letters, Nathan claimed that he had irreparably lost faith in our ability to work together, but less than 24 hours later, he sent follow-up emails retracting his statements and admitting that he simply did not want current affairs to be a democratic workplace. He believes in his guts that the magazine and media venture we have collectively created is purely his. He wrote, This organization has been heading slowly for some sort of reckoning, where it was going to have to be made clear once and for all what kind of authority I wanted to have over it. And I was in denial about the fact that the answer is I think I should be on top of the org chart with everyone else selected by me and reporting to me. I let current affairs build up in a sort of egalitarian community of friends while knowing in my heart that I still thought of it as my project over which I should have control. Anyway, this goes on for a bit, but I... Yeah, that's, that's really the important part. And this is very bad for optics like really really bad because current affairs and nathan robinson have been bull-throated supporters of worker ownership and in fact have very much criticized liberals for not supporting unions and not supporting other forms of worker representation and here's the here's a good thread with some of the more hypocritical bits. So this was a one piece from 2019. I support unions, just not this one. Liberalism in a nutshell. Nathan J. Robinson. So kind of the same, you know. I support uh, worker worker ownership, just not in my head project. This essay includes the line, this is frequently what leftists are referring to when we rant about liberals, people who want to be good but aren't invested in the political projects that make the world better. And he has tweeted this same year, just a couple of, of months ago. Imagine if you controlled your workplace and could decide how the money was spent and your boss was an elected leader rather than a feudal tyrant. What horror. <laughs> so, yeah. The optics, like I said, are absolutely terrible because no one, no one likes hypocrisy on this magnitude. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I, from an intellectual perspective, I, I had a lot of respect for Nathan Robinson. I think he was a very good writer. I think he, I really enjoyed his debates with Glenn Greenwald, which I, I agreed 100% with his position. Uh, on on that particular issue um i never had my hands on a on an issue of current affairs which is a bit of a shame uh, it doesn't it's us only and but it looked like a very i i really liked the style i really liked that sort of bohemian cosmopolitan look that it had and i know that there's a lot of people who who get bothered by this idea that socialists have any sort of aesthetic that isn't like a drab communist housing block um and i, I think that's just wrong i think uh, i think current affairs did a good job of sort of promoting the, the joys of socialism just by its mere artistic style 
And that was a good thing. And, you know, Nathan Robinson himself would get a bit of a, a lot of flack, actually, from his own demeanor, his, his kind of look, his English, 19th century English dandy look and sort of fakish British accent that he would sometimes put when speaking. And I had no problem with that. Well, I mean, I still don't have a problem with that. I think everyone should be free to, you know, whether you're a socialist or not, you want to dress the way you want. That is absolutely fine. Um, but now in the context of the statements, I do think that it that kind of was a reflection of, of ego. And the difference between current affairs and I guess its main... I wouldn't call it competitors because I, I that was one, also one of the good things about having two socialist magazines in the US that you got a sense that they weren't competitors but were leveraging each other. Uh, and I'm talking about current affairs and Jacobin. And the difference between current affairs and Jacobin is that Jacobin definitely feels like a magazine that is more of a, a collaborative effort that it brings different minds to the table and it's not centered around a single figure. Whereas Current Affairs was indistinguishable from Nathan Robinson and Nathan Robinson was indistinguishable from Current Affairs. And I think in the long run, it's really hard to separate the image of you know the public intellectual that leads it with any kind of attempt to, to decentralize it. So... I'm not surprised that it, that it ended this way. You know, it's it's sad, but I am yeah, I, I'm I'm not surprised. I think it was definitely more likely to happen in current affairs than in Jacobin, precisely because of this. And it goes to show you that things like worker ownership can't be left to the winds of an organization or a company. These are things that need to be enshrined in law. This could have been very easily avoided if from the very beginning current affairs had an ownership structure that led towards worker ownership. And I'm talking one in which, for example, every year a certain percentage of ownership would be shifted to employees, say 5%. That means in 10 years you become worker owned. Well, after 10 years you become worker owned. And this would have solved the problem, I think, quite easily, because workers would have known that it was on a road to worker ownership from day one. And Nathan Robinson would have had 10 years to establish his vision for the magazine. So I think it was a mistake that, that this kind of ownership structure was not set from day one. And I also saw, I, I recall a video, I, I couldn't find it, where where he was talking about about current affairs practically as if it was a worker co-op, which now it's become clear that that was a lie. So, yeah, ownership matters. It doesn't, like, what you hear here about, uh, you know, current affairs being, you know, a group of friends working together, that's all fine. But in the end, ownership matters. That's why it's so central to the socialist project. And it's incredibly hypocritical that an organization that promotes these values doesn't operate on them. And the truth is, socialism is, is, is a minority, okay? And, and optics matter because now you have people like Amy fucking Therese, who if you haven't heard for her of her, she is a, an Australian leftist troll she's not leftist anymore by the way she's she's lately gone into you know this rabbit hole of anti-vax crap um and i don't think she ever really was leftist but she's had a field day you know a red bull fueled field day just mocking all that's going on because she's had a, a grudge on jacobin and and current affairs for quite some time so she is delighted somewhere in australia in some backwater, there is some very heavy Red Bull fueled maniacal cackling from this individual. Uh, yeah. So we need to we need to 
live by our values. We need to put our money where our mouth is. And we we just can't do this because the optics are just so bad. And it becomes incredibly disappointed for thinking that 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 we can't organize in in the way that we want others to organize. Because we we can't just we can't just slam liberals for union busting or not wanting ownership when we're not capable of living by those same standards. So let's see what what happens. Um, but yeah, a sad day for the uh, for socialist internet and uh, yeah, social the the intellectual. Uh, promotion of socialism, which magazines like Current Affairs, uh, like Jacobin, uh, or in the UK like Tribune, are are absolutely vital. Even if they're not mainstream publications, they are absolutely vital. They they have contributed enormously for spreading the message, and they need to live by those values. There's no excuse. On that note like this video please like please share most importantly please subscribe